Now, former Deputy Shona Pittman, um, you decided to go public after still being subjected to what we call the Jersey Way. Uh, what's happened or been happening uh, recently? Well, uh, around uh, six months ago, I was involved in a car accident. I was at a pedestrian crossing on the St. Clements Coast Road and um, I crossed the road and I was knocked over by a car. I went over the bonnet. Luckily, I wasn't seriously injured, but I did go to hospital uh, and had photos taken. Um, and Of your injuries? Of my injuries, yeah. Um, and the driver, um, he had gone through red light, lights, basically, when I pressed the button. Um, he had gone through there and uh, I went over the bonnet. Right, so um, the, the, the reason why you're going public on this uh, is, is because of the, the way you've been treated by the State of Jersey Police. Yeah. Uh, what has happened in this regard in the last uh, what it, six months since, since you were run over? What's, what's happened since then? Uh, right, well, three months after the incident, um, the, uh, the, the police officer who dealt with the, with the incident uh, told me that they weren't going to prosecute. Um, now, there was, uh, his reason was that there was, um, because the driver had put his brakes on, um, he was actually driving, not di driving uh, negligently or unsafe. Um, and uh, it wasn't, it was an accident. Now there were three witnesses um, all concurring with each other saying that was his fault and he actually admitted and made an statement to that effect. Um, but uh, the day that the the police officer came and told me that I also asked for his insurance details and my statement, a copy of my statement. Um, I waited a month, never got it. Then I made a complaint to the Chief of Police, Balron, um, and his deputy, Taylor, got back to me saying that they were reviewing it. A few days later, he said, well, they were going to reopen the case. case. Now I got, I got a letter, got a, um, a phone call from PC Coleman um, only a few days ago, exactly a month uh, to the day uh, that Taylor said that he was going to reopen the case, uh, and the PC, PC told me then he was going to reopen the case. So this, there's a lots of procrastination here. He also said on the phone to me that he needed a further statement from me and the witnesses, and this was going to take um, another two, up to two months. But you and the witnesses have already made statements. Yes, we have. Um, and we... He wants you to make more statements. Yes. And we've also, uh, he also asked for my medical records in relation to the, um, well, he wants me to sign a consent form to allow the police to look at my red medical records relating to the incident. Um, when I know that um, this is not needed, all that has to be proven is dangerous driving. Um, but you, you asked, um, I don't know if, if you've mentioned it, you, you, you did ask the police for the driver's insurance details. Yes, I did. Yes, that was now, it's two and a half months ago now that I asked for that. And I've yet to, to have that and my statement. Have they refused you the, 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 the driver's um, insurance details or are you just waiting to see them two and a half months later? Well I'm waiting to, to see it. I've, I've also asked for um, the law in which um, they, they, made, they made the decision uh, not to prosecute um, and other details I've asked for and, and I haven't got anything as yet. So we're six months down the line mm -hmm. and no further, no closer to um, any... No. So. Uh, I suppose, like, how does this all sort of fit in with the Jersey Way? Well, I think uh, myself and my husband Trevor being politicians who spoke out, um, and I think with me it started back in 2008 when I brought a vote of no confidence in the then bailiff, Sir Philip Balash, and that was for basically allowing a paedophile in the, the uh, honorees when he was uh, head of the honorary as Attorney General years before. 
Anyway, at that time, his brother, William Balash, was the chief prosecutor, the, the um, attorney general. And a few months after that vote of no confidence, uh, the, myself uh, and another deputy were um, pursued. We were the only two states members pursued and no other candidates during our election campaign um, because we broke the Article 39A law for helping disabled people fill in forms for, to, to register to vote. Um, now the question is why were we the only ones taken to the courts uh, and, and um, well, were there prosecuted? Others? Were there others that broke the law? There were because um, the other deputies charged sheet that there was another name on there, that person was never pursued and also our colleagues um, at the time told us they had broken the law and they weren't pursued. And, um, and it started from there. Um, now, the, um, now a couple of years ago um, there was, uh, we, me and myself and Trevor, uh, we were getting a former, lot of, former Deputy Trevor yes, we were receiving a lot of cyber abuse um, and this was going on for, for probably a year or two before that. We made com numerous complaints to the police amongst other individuals who made complaints um, about this per person um, and nothing got dealt with there. The, um, the, the, the police ref refused to pursue a case of um, cyberbullying against you? Yes, they did, yes. Okay. Um, and further, um, after our court case with the, the Jersey Evening Post, um, we, there was some threatening, there was an incident where some threatening letters went out to our creditors and set, basically saying, we're gonna set your house on fire if, if the Pitmans lose the case. And um, we put forward a, number, a, a couple of names to the police and they, those people... Uh, Who you were, believe to be, could have been the authors of those threatening letters? Yes, that's right. And uh, we, and those people were not investigated, they were not questioned. Um, and lastly, um, Chief of Police Bowron as well. Now, whilst Trevor was, we, we were in the States, he wrote a letter to the JP. Mike, it, um, Chief Officer Mike Bowron did? Yes, he did. And he attacked Trevor, basically. Now what he was attacking him on was something that was said in the States, not by Trevor, but by another deputy. And Mr. Bowron never apologised to, to Trevor. So I think there is definitely history um, there. There's a line there of... Uh, of there obviously you know. does seem to be a, a pattern of that, yes. you know, that um, you're, yeah. you're not receiving justice. Mm -hmm. uh, well, would you say... I mean, what, what people will argue, hang on a minute, our um, police force is autonomous. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not politicised. You know, um... It's definitely politicised. There's no no way. To, um, you can ask, um, I'm sure, Stuart Sivray, Graham Power, um, Lenny Harper will say, and, and other politicians who, who've come across, um, who, who've questioned um, authorities and, and cover-ups and things um, will say it's, it's definitely politicised.